I'm standing in Centennial Square, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, where just a few weeks ago, Occupy protesters were camping out. Those protests and others around the world have since been broken down, but the Occupy movement remains a main story of the 2011 news cycle. I'm Christopher Munz Mickelin in Victoria. I'm Ty Campbell in Nanaimo. Hello, and I'm Mikhail Bush reporting from INET Online. And as the year 2012 approaches, we take a look back at the news, the media, and the stories that made up 2011. I'll be talking about the Occupy protests just a little bit later in this broadcast, but first I'm going to talk about the most dominant and longest running news story of 2011, the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring was a series of popular uprisings that spread across the Middle East, giving people hope and deposing dictators along the way. And the entire series of events started in Tunisia in early January. Protesters first gathered in Tunisia in January, demanding political reforms. The Tunisian leader, Ben Ali, was forced from power on January 14th, and he fled to Saudi Arabia. Inspired by the Tunisian revolution, Egyptians took to the streets in January, demanding the resignation of their president, Hosni Mubarak. Clashes between protesters and police continued into February, when images of violent clashes between police and protesters filled television screens the world over. Eventually, Mubarak resigned, officially abdicating power on February 11th. Since the departure of Mubarak, Egypt has been under military control and citizens are once again protesting a lack of political freedoms. In November, more images of police demonstrator clashes in Tahrir Square uh, were spread on TV screens across the world in what I like to term the start of Revolution 2.0. Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi was the next Arab leader to fall. The Libyan uprising began on February 15th with protests in the eastern city of Benghazi. As protests swept across Libya, Gaddafi troops began to move in, killing hundreds of people. Supported by the sea and by NATO troops in the air, Libyan rebels began to retake control of their country. The point of no return for Gaddafi came on August 22nd when the capital Tripoli fell into rebel control. The civil war continued for two more months until Gaddafi's hometown of Sirte was captured by rebel forces and Gaddafi himself was found, captured and killed. Not such good news from the countries of Bahrain, Yemen and Syria. In Bahrain, protesters gathered in Pearl Roundabout starting on February 17th. The protesters were demanding more political reform, however the government was unwilling to give it. After a month of protests, military troops and police moved in to break up the protesters. In Yemen, protesters initially demonstrated against unemployment and economic conditions. Protests in Yemen have been ongoing since February, but after police brutally attacked the protesters, the demonstrators escalated their demands, calling for the resignation of President Ali Abdullah Saleh. After months of clashes between protesters and police, President Saleh finally agreed to sign a power transition deal. And finally, in Syria, violent demonstrations are still ongoing and pressure on leader Bashir al-Assad uh, to resign has become intense. The protests themselves began in late January of 2011 and in March of 2011, they had quickly escalated to a full-scale uprising. Throughout the uprising, al-Assad has used violence to attempt to suppress the protesters. Despite the violence, however, thousands of people have continued to turn out to protest each and every day. The violent tactics have resulted in the deaths of over 4,000 civilians and the Arab League and the, Euro the European Union have both voted in favour of sanctions against Syria. While violence swept across the Middle East, people in North America and Europe were distracted by a catastrophe of a different kind. 2011 was full of difficult economic times in Greece. The country is heavily in debt and spending cuts prompted riots and protests across the country. Greek Prime Minister George Papandreou resigned in November. Now, the Greek Prime Minister wasn't the only political casualty of the European debt crisis. The longest-serving post-war Italian Prime Minister, Silvio Berlusconi, was forced uh, to step down in November of 2011. Berlusconi resigned after deep government cuts became unpopular with a majority of Italian citizens. The United States nearly defaulted on its debt this year after the borrowing limit was nearly reached. Democrats and Republicans eventually hammered out a deal that stopped the U.S. from defaulting. The spending cuts and market crisis in the United States sparked the Occupy Wall Street protests in September of 2011. The Occupy Wall Street protesters are calling for a redistribution of wealth from the richest individuals and corporations to the so-called 99% of the population. As the weeks wore on, however, the public became more dissatisfied with the Occupy protesters and in November of 2011, uh, 
police around the world began breaking down the encampments. Uh, some protests, like the one in Oakland, California, were marred by violence, while other protests, such as the one in Victoria and Vancouver, British Columbia, were disassembled without much incident. Japan made headlines in March when a 9.0 magnitude caused massive damage and loss of life across the country. The initial earthquake was the most powerful ever to hit Japan, and as if that wasn't bad enough, the country was uh, struck by a tsunami just minutes after the earthquake happened. The tsunami flooded Japanese coastal villages and swept away nearly everything in its path. And as if the double whammy of a tsunami and earthquake wasn't enough, Japan was hit with a third blow, a nuclear crisis, when the Fukushima nuclear power plant was seriously damaged by the quake and the rushing water afterwards. Japan is still trying to recover from the three major disasters in 2011. In July of 2011, Thailand experienced a devastating flood. While the flooding initially hit the country in July, waters continued to rise through the summer and into December. Eventually, the flood waters crept into the Thai capital Bangkok, displacing thousands of people. Hurricane Irene hit the east coast of the United States in August of 2011. Irene caused flooding and damage through the Caribbean, the eastern U.S., and all the way into Canada. 56 deaths have been attributed to the storm. Now it's back to Chris with some more information on the earthquake in 2011. Thanks, Mikhail. Well, 2011 started off with a shake for the residents of Christchurch, New Zealand. A 6.3 magnitude earthquake struck just 10 kilometers away from the town of Christchurch early in the morning of February 22nd. The earthquake caused massive amounts of damage in town and killed an estimated 180 people. Turkey was rocked by two earthquakes this year. The first quake struck in May and it hurt over 120 people. The second one struck the region of Van and it killed over 600. Now it's time to take a look at some of the top sports stories of 2011 and for that we're joined by Tally Campbell who's standing by in Nanaimo. Tally. Thanks, Chris. This past year for sports has been a big sports year in every category, from sidelining injuries to deaths to outrageous comebacks and much more. Here are the top 10 sports stories of 2011. In at number 10, a huge upset for Colts that star, back, star quarterback Manning has been sidelined for the entire season. Next, are just forced Manning to sit for the entire season and snapping a streak consecutive starts at 227. Manning's doctor said he will not be able to play or play or practice for the rest of the season. In number nine, the the legendary Raiders owner dies at age 82 after six decades of being involved with the National Football League. Al Davis is known as the controversial fire band who remade one of the NFL's best known teams in his own way. In recent years, Davis has was known as the lackluster success and ir irritating fellow. NFL owners. In number eight, the NBA lockout hit, locked out its players July 1st when its collective bargaining agreement expired, and furthermore on October 10th, canceling the first two weeks of the regular season game because of labor impasse. Both sides, union led by Chief Billy Hunter and Commissioner David Stern, remained far apart on just about every major issue. However, both sides eventually settled their differences in late November, agreeing to a 66 game schedule. Number seven, two time Indy 500 champion, was part of a 15 car crash on the 11th lap of the Vegas Indy 300 when he sustained an unsurvivable injury. Dan Walden was airlifted from Las Vegas track at 1.19 p.m. local time and was taken to University Medical Center becoming the first IndyCar driver to die on track since rookie Paul Dana killed in practice. They did it! The St. Louis Cardinals win the World Series. After being down to their last strike in the bottom of the ninth in Elimination Game 6, the Cardinals vowed to defeat the Texas Rangers in extra innings. St. Louis would go on to win the series in seven games. David Fries, who hit the game-tying double and game-winning homer in the game six, was awarded the World Series Most Valuable Player. Halfway there, number five, legendary heavyweight boxer died after a short battle with liver cancer. Smoking Joe Fraser won a gold medal in 1964, but will be, uh, will be forever remembered for his three fights against Muhammad Ali. In number four, probably one of the most shocking, sad stories to report about, in the wake of a sex scandal led the indictment of former Penn State defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky, legendary head coach Joe Paterno was fired by the Board of Trustees after 46 years in position. Sandusky was accused of abusing eight boys over, the 50, over 15 years of age. On that day Paterno was fired, the Board of Trustees also ousted the school president. In number three, Sidney Crosby, Sid the Kid as people know him, is known as one of the world's greatest hockey superstars, but was sidelined for 10 months after sustaining from a concussion. The Penguin star returned to action and lit up the Nordic Islanders rather with two goals, two assists, 
But the excitement, sadly, was short-lived. In a game against Boston on December 5th, Crosby collided with one of his teammates and also took an elbow to the head by Bruins' David Krejci. When concussion symptoms returned, Crosby was shelved again by the Penguins. In number two, after playing his entire 11-year career with St. Louis Cardinals, Albert went on to the open market. The 31-year-old first baseman agreed to a $254 million 10-year contract with the LA Angels. And number one, the top sports story of 2011, the Vancouver Canucks and the Boston Bruins in the Stanley Cup Final. Yep, that's right. It was a Stanley Cup Final, both teams going back to back and forward, back and back to forward, but Game 7 of Vancouver proved to be a disappointment. The Bruins ended a 39-year Cup drought by defeating the Vancouver Canucks in Rogers Arena. But to the dismay of media, what was happening on the outside of the arena was bigger news. When people started rioting in like the 1994 Stanley Cup Finals, as windows were smashed, cop cars lit on fire, and people were injured. However, Vancouver police did finally contain it about everything at about 2 in the morning, and the next morning, Vancouverites came down to help clean the city up. Now that is a look back at the top stories, stories rather, of 2011 for sports. 2012 is going to prevail to be a bigger year. Will Crosby return? How are the London 2012 limbs going to do? And so much more. The, for the sports category, I'm Tally Campbell. We're going to head back to Victoria where Christopher Munn's weapons is in a much warmer place than I am because definitely it's cold out here. Christopher? Well, it was one of the most covered news events of 2011, and I'm not speaking of the Arab Spring or the Japan crisis. One of the single most live covered news events of 2011 was the British royal wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton. Uh, the royal wedding is my number one media moment of 2011, with television stations from Nigeria to Kuwait, Tehran to Moscow weighing in, and of course scrambling for a shot of that famous kiss. A kiss of a different kind in Vancouver grabbed the world's attention when riots broke out in the city after the Vancouver Canucks uh, lost the Stanley Cup to the Boston Bruins in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. According to many news outlets, the riots in Vancouver tarnished the, the city's reputation abroad, and while I'm not sure how much tourism has been adversely impacted, the event certainly received a lot of media attention. In the United Kingdom, news reporters became newsmakers when Rupert Murdoch's News of the World tabloid was revealed to have hacked the cellular telephones of murder victims, politicians, and celebrities alike. The tabloid scandal in the UK resulted in the closure of the News of the World and an inquest into the UK's tabloid media as a whole. After the earthquake in Japan, the Arab Spring and the economic crisis in both Europe and the United States, it was nearly forgotten, but the 2011 African famine was real and affected hundreds of thousands of people. On July 20th, the United Nations declared a famine in two regions of Somalia, the first time in 30 years that a famine had been declared. Since the famine declaration, the United Nations has made several food drops into the affected region. Relief in the form of rain is expected to arrive sometime in the year 2012. Panic and chaos in Oslo, Norway on July 22, 2011. Extreme right-wing terrorist Anders Breivik was responsible for a car bombing in the government executive quarter in the morning, killing eight people and causing serious damage to buildings. After the bombing, Breivik left downtown Oslo and took some guns to the island of Utoya, where a youth camp sponsored by the government was taking place. Breivik opened fire on the children and teens at the camp, killing some 69 attendees. Breivik has since appeared in court and has been formally charged with terrorism. Riots in London after protests against the police shooting of Mark Duggan got out of control. Youths burned buildings and cars as well as looted shops. Over 1,000 people have been charged by police. On May 1, 2011, U.S. President Barack Obama announced that U.S. Special Forces in Pakistan had killed Al-Qaeda mastermind Osama bin Laden. Uh, the killing of bin Laden sparked a serious downgrading of relations between the United States and Pakistan uh, as the U.S. military didn't consult with Pakistani authorities before making the raid. North Korea's dear leader passed away this year. Kim Jong-il reportedly died of a heart attack on December 17th. Kim Jong-il will be succeeded by his son, Kim Jong-un. Well, it is that time of year again where we transition from one year to another. Here at INET, 2011 has been a big year for us, thanks to your support. You've given us critique criticism that we've taken very heavily. You've given us support by liking our Facebooks, our YouTubes, etc. But it's our time to give thanks to you. We want to thank you for this incredible year you've given us. And we hope you take every opportunity to, to gain in 2012. Make sure you smile, because smiles are contagious. The more you smile, the more everyone else smiles. From our family to your family, from the INF family to your family, we want to wish you all a very happy new year.